so today we're going to talk about the pros and cons of the triple rule out in the setting of ED chest pain. And I have no disclosures for this talk. And the objectives are to provide an overview of chest pain in the ED, to talk about some te technical considerations with respect to using the triple rule out versus dedicated coronary CTA, which is the standard uh, test or standard protocol that's generally used to assess ED chest pain using CT, to provide some case examples uh, of triple rule out CT and what it, uh, it appears like, and finally to talk about some clinical considerations, including uh, literature, a, a bit of literature discussion, and finally some uh, new considerations uh, in uh, going forward as to what we might do with triple rule out. So I think uh, by way of introduction, the diagnosis of chest pain, I think as everybody is familiar with, is quite challenging. There is the matter of trying to separate acute coronary syndrome from, from a whole host of other cardiac and non-cardiac causes, some of which are serious and some of which are less so. Uh, it's a huge problem uh, with greater than 60, 6 million ED visits per year for chest pain, with a large fraction of patients being admitted, at least for observation, 50%, many probably unnecessarily because of, uh, in the setting of normal biomarkers and ECG, and this happens to a large degree out of an abundance of caution and fear of medical legal action. So the question really is, can CT, in, in a particular discussion, the triple rule out, uh, do something to uh, better uh, t tailor uh, patients, and where does the triple rule out fit into this whole issue of using CT to assess chest pain in the ED? First of all, I think it's become clear that CT does have a role uh, in looking at chest pain in general, and that uh, relates to improved scanner technology and the increased availability of CT in proximity to the ED, and it's widely used for any number of indications. And there's at least the concept that uh, it may uh, be cost neutral or perhaps even reduce the cost. And there's been some evidence uh, in a number of the multi-center trials showing that that's the case. But in our particular discussion here, we're going to talk about the triple rule out and uh, how it compares with dedicated coronary CTA and where one might want to use it. And I think everybody is familiar with the term triple rule out. It specifically re refers to a comprehensive gative study of the uh, thorax, and the triple refers to acute coronary syndrome, aortic dissection, and pulmonary embolism, as those are serious things that we're trying to rule out, although the name is somewhat of a, an oversimplification. So let's move then to some technical considerations in comparing the triple rule-out study to dedicated coronary CTA. First of all, as mentioned, triple rule-out is in fact a comprehensive study, but because there, it is a comprehensive study, there are some potential trade-offs. One potential issue is that there may be less spatial resolution of, of the coronary arteries because we're doing a more generalized scan, and I'll address that in a moment. Uh, and certainly radiation and contrast issues are other things that may play into this, and again, we'll talk about in a moment, and finally, in a moment, and we'll finally, so the length of the scan uh, is greater, and depending on the, the type of scanner that one has, the, the, the amount of time required to do the scan may lead to uh, artifacts such as mo motion artifact, which can degrade the image, not only in the coronaries, but in other parts of the scan. I think the protocol for doing these studies is fairly well known. Dedicated coronary CTA is obviously done with a field of view limited to the heart, whereas triple rule out is a much wider field of view intended to encompass the entire thorax. The reconstruction either way is done either with a retrospective 10 cardiac phases or more often in the, uh, currently we do this prospectively and that can be done regardless of whether, it's doing, whether one is doing coronary CT or the triple rule out. As far as image quality, I mentioned that there's at least a concern that the using a, a more generalized scan such as a dedicated, uh, uh, such as a triple rule out might lead to uh, degradation of image quality. And the fact of the matter is we looked at that some years ago, both for motion artifact and contrast op opacification, and found that there was really not a significant difference, meaning that if one wishes to use a triple rule out and it's done properly, one will not see a degradation of image quality vis-a-vis -vis coronary CTA. What about contrast injection? Well, clearly with a dedicated coronary CTA, one is only concerned with, or primarily concerned with opacifying the left 
heart and coronary arteries, whereas with the triple rule out, one has to add on assessment of the right ventricle and the pulmonary arteries to achieve a full assessment. And in that case, uh, more contrast is inevitably going to be given, but the amount of contrast, uh, additional incremental contrast, is actually quite little. It's perhaps on the order of 20%, as in this example. And the main difference derives from the fact that with a coronary CTA, the middle part of the injection protocol uh, uh, is diluted here 50 50, whereas with the triple rule out, there is no dilution. Now, is 20 cc's uh, additional really going to uh, cause kidney injury when 80 cc's? did not, that's rather unlikely, but at least there's a theoretical consideration. The effect of using the uh, triple rule out contrast protocol is that the right heart is quite opacified, potentially leading to street artifact and to the right coronary artery, although this is not usually a problem. Whereas with a dedicated coronary CTA, you can see the contrast in the right heart is considerably more muted than the contrast in the left heart. But again, with a dedicated coronary CTA, we're, we're not really concerned with the right-sided circulation, and therefore that's perfectly acceptable. What about radiation exposure? You'll notice that the triple rule out has a potentially a radiation exposure that's considerably higher than a gated CT and is in fact somewhere in the order of six to uh, eight times the, the dose of background. And it's, uh, I would also point out though that it is no higher than a standard dual isotope uh, perfu uh, myocardial perfusion study, uh, but we can do considerably better by applying some of the uh, more recently developed techniques to reduce radiation exposure. And so uh, one of the things we can do, which is, is, is actually just a common sense sort of thing, is limit the longitudinal extent of the triple rule out protocol because if our major concern uh, in the uh, chest other than uh, coronary artery disease is pulmonary embolism, the fact of the matter is the smaller vessels in the apices and the bases are not actually visible. So by doing that, you can reduce the dose. Uh, and further, you can do, rather than a uh, tube uh, current on throughout the retrospective uh, cycle, uh, gating, throughout the cardiac cycle when retrospective gating, we can also reduce the dose using dose modulation, uh, turning down the dose during non-critical parts of the cardiac cycle. And uh, using these two approaches, one can reduce the radiation dose for triple out rule out CT by more than 50%, uh, as shown in this paper uh, from uh, Jefferson. You can also further reduce the dose by employing prospective gating where the tube is turned on only during the critical part of the acquisition, namely uh, diastole. And in doing this, one can reduce the dose in the, on the order of 70 to 80 percent of what would, one would get with a standard retrospective approach, which is a considerable dose savings. And then in addition to that, one can do iterative reconstruction, which is really an additive uh, is additive to any of these other uh, approaches. And by doing that, um, you can further reduce the dose, perhaps uh, 40 to 50%. And this is with hybrid iterative reconstruction. Now with a sort of a model-based approach, we can even do better by reducing noise further, allowing uh, a better, uh, a lower dose uh, for the same image quality. And if one employs uh, some of these techniques, you can see that the triple rule out iterative reconstruction approach, which is listed at the bottom, it falls to the range of five to seven millisieverts, which is not terribly high above background dose and much lower than the standard uh, non-approach uh, uh, that we would use uh, for uh, gated CT. And one can even do perhaps a little bit uh, better than that uh, by one, reducing the KV in patients who have lower BMIs. And also, uh, if you have a scanner that can do high pitch prospective spiral uh, gating, then one can even reduce the dose potentially further. And this is a study we did. And you can see we reduced, we used high pitch prospective gating. We reduced the dose, the KV, uh, this should say KV, to between 80 and 100 um, KV. And you can see that our overall millisieverts was 1.45. Uh, which is really quite a bit lower than even any of the figures I gave a moment ago. So I think it's possible to considerably reduce the dose and maintain image quality. Here's an example from that study showing that the image quality was well maintained uh, for all the coronary arteries, the aorta, and the pulmonary arteries, all with the triple rule out uh, low dose approach. Now let me then move on to a few case examples just showing what uh, this looks like uh, in practice, and you'll notice that the 
in this case, for instance, that the dedicated that, the, that this is a triple rut, but it looks just like a dedicated coronary CTA. The coronary arteries are well visualized, and it's negative. And this was actually followed up um, as part of a protocol showing that the stress test was also negative. In this case, that we had a positive result. You can see there's mixed plaque here with a significant narrowing of the LAD, and this was confirmed, uh, and the patient underwent stent therapy. Here's a patient who had a, a CT that was negative for coronary stenosis. You can see some eccentric plaque, but in fact, there is a tunnel here, and this patient had a myocardial bridge, uh, and you can see that it also has a perfusion defect. So this is a non-atherosclerotic cause of uh, coronary uh, stenosis. The patient was symptomatic, went on for a nuclear medicine study, perfusion study, and you can see that that was, uh, in fact, also positive. Uh, just to highlight the point that there are other things besides the triple rod, another triple rod study, coronary arteries, just showing the left side here, were negative. Uh, but you can see that this patient, in fact, had chest pain, in this case caused by pericarditis, and there's a pericardial fusion. So this is a non, this is an additional cause of chest pain that one might detect beyond the triple rod, but done with a triple rod study. And then the final section I'm going to talk about are this sort of this broad area of clinical considerations. And one of the considerations, of course, uh, when doing a, a dedicated coronary CTA is that we restrict the field of view. And you might appreciate here that um, if we do the math, the, the triple rule out is the left and the dedicated coronary CTA is the right. By doing the dedicated coronary CTA, we miss 31% of the, I'm sorry, we only get 31% of the lungs. We miss nearly 70% of the lungs if we do not secondarily reconstruct uh, wider field of view. So de just doing a dedicated coronary CTA really does exclude a, a good bit of the lungs. Uh, and this is a study that we did looking at that specifically. If you do a tight field of view, you only get 14% of the lungs, as seen in the bottom right-hand uh, corner here. 86% of the lungs are, are missed. Now, many people do, in fact, uh, uh, secondarily reconstruct the field of view to a larger, uh, to, to the chest wall, and that will obviate some of the problem, but you still probably miss a third of the lung, the upper part, and perhaps the lower part as well. And that, of course, could lead to something like this, where the dedicated coronary CTA, the lungs don't really show anything, but with the triple rule out, you can see that, in fact, there's a lung a neoplasm here in the, um, in the left lung. Uh, here's a study specifically addressing the triple rule out again from uh, Jefferson where they looked at um, almost 200 patients and you can see that the name triple rule out uh, underestimates the number of causes that might occur uh, and uh, be responsible for causing chest pain. You can see there are on the order of about 15 different causes and pulmonary embolism is high on the list but aortic dissection is not so high on the list. So uh, hence the, my comment that triple rule out is perhaps not the ideal term for this study. It's more of a gated comprehensive uh, contrast uh, enhanced study of the thorax. But in this study you can see that over 10% of patients had a non-coronary reason for chest pain identified by the triple rule out, uh, which is a reasonable number. Uh, what about uh, getting to the bottom line of why you might want to do a triple rule out versus a dedicated coronary CTA? And the answer seems to be that if there's any indication for the triple rule out, it, it's in the setting where, you're, where you have an overlap in clinical symptoms, atypical chest pain, where the concern exists both for the acute coronary syndrome and for PE. And this little study that we did some time ago showed that if you did a dedicated coronary CTA and the patient, in fact, had a pulmonary embolism, you would miss that pulmonary embolism as much as 20% of the time, just by the contrast issue and the field of view issue that I mentioned a moment ago. So this overlap seems to be the one instance where triple rule out might be appropriate. And this is just an example showing an edge of, the, uh, edge of the field of view finding where you can see that there's a PE, but it's certainly much easier to see on the dedicated, uh, on the triple rule out study than the limited field of view study uh, that uh, is on the left. This uh, paper published a couple years ago highlights the same point. They compared triple rule out, CT, and what, where there was added value as far as the other diagnoses, meaning PE and aortic dissection. And the one area, although overall, as shown here, they did not find uh, an uh, improved diagnostic yield, the one area where it was actually quite close is the PE question. So the diagnostic yield, although it was low, there was nearly, very nearly a significant, basically a significant difference between triple rule out and cardiac and dedicated cardiac CT. 
uh, and this is just an illustration from that paper, showing that um, although the event rates were, were rather low, the p-value actually was almost significant between triple rule-out and dedicated coronary CT. They had no occurrence of aortic dissection at all in that study. So this seems to indicate that the one value of triple rule-out uh, might be where you have an overlap in suspicion between PE and uh, the acute coronary syndrome. And this uh, highlights just talking a little bit about future uh, de developments or actually ongoing developments because they, they exist, but that could be applied to ED chest pain CT. It relate to the issue that when we do CTA, we're really doing triple rule out or otherwise doing an anatomic study. And uh, if there's a question, in this case, there's two vessel disease, which vessel is the culprit vessel? We have to do uh, a functional study uh, such as perfusion, perfusion imaging to determine that. In this case, it's the RCA that's the culprit. Um, but perhaps we'll get around that in the ED setting um, by using either CT perfusion as the depicted on the left or possibly uh, CT FFR as uh, depicted on the right. Um, and those things, I think, could perhaps strengthen the power of both the TRO and dedicated coronary CTA. Um, this is just a fun case I like to show of a triple rule in, or perhaps a triple rule in this patient has, as you can see, a pulmonary embolism, has a type B uh, aortic dissection, and you can see here perhaps that there's also coronary artery disease. So kind of a rare occurrence of a triple rule in. Um, so I will say in summary that in general, uh, ED chest pain CT should be tailored to the most likely etiology. Do the study that fits. If it's a, an ACS rule out, do coronary CTA dedicated PE, do a CTPA, do an aortic dissection protocol for aortic dissection. The issue really occurs only when there's an overlap, and particularly when the suspicion of overlap w between the acute coronary syndrome and pulmonary embolism. In that case, then triple rule out may in fact have a role.